Joining me today on SNFL Radio is South Adelaide forward Pan Kokonakis. And uh, Pan, obviously I thought it would be appropriate to have a chat with you today given that uh, you're currently over in Melbourne and um, spending some time with your younger brother Tanasi after his fantastic win last night. Uh, how's it all feeling the day after being in the camp? Uh, yeah, well, it was a pretty late finish last night, so... We're all just uh, waking up now and, and um, kind of easing into the day, but no, it was just um, very lucky to, lucky to get through and happy happy for him. Uh, got over the line. Uh, obviously, the, the crowd helped him out a lot. So yeah, just yeah. thanks for everyone for coming out and helping him helping yeah. him get over. What's it like for you to be in the players' box? Um, yeah, I mean it's. It's intense at times. You've got to kind of um, try and try and uh, keep it pretty calm in there. Uh, when, when he's down a bit, though, you got to you got to try try get him up. And then when there's, there's a bit of a roller coaster going on, try and try and keep him level headed. So there's a bit of a, a bit of a game to a few times. He will look up to the box and mm. yeah, I don't know. You got to try and give him something, but. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, it's um, it's nerve wracking. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Especially when you can't control anything out on court. So. Yeah, <laughs> it was certainly the case last night. Obviously, the match ebbed and flowed quite significantly, and fighting off uh, ten straight break points. I understand after in a four-hour battle. So uh, you must have been uh, almost as physically worn out as he was. Yeah, I mean, by the end of it, I, I had a pretty sore neck, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, it does get get a little bit a little bit draining. Um, yep. Yeah, there are a few big points, but yeah, the, the biggest thing is just not being able to do anything about it. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm probably one one of the calmer ones uh, out out of the family. Uh, yep. So I can I can imagine how the other ones, other ones are feeling yep. during the match. Yeah, and of course um, you've played a lot of tennis yourself, and strong <laughs> tennis background as has the whole family. Um, so I guess you have a, a great insight into what he's going, what's probably going through his mind every single point. Uh, a little bit. I mean, obviously I didn't play in anywhere near the level um, he's got to at the moment. But mm. yeah, started playing when I was play in school, and then decided to, to take it a, a bit more seriously and kind of left footy a bit behind um, mm. for, for a few years. And then um, a couple of years ago, yeah, when, when I decided to. So joint South Adelaide was, was when I just started beating me out. So oh, oh, here we go. So that I've um, got to change sports here. No point being the, being the best in the family at the tennis. So <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was the, the main reason. And um, yeah, just, just a little, little bit easier easier to, to play footy rather than a bit of a heavy commitment with, with tennis, I suppose, travelling and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, and I understand your career pursued as well as a structural engineer played a partner. Yeah, I mean, so my, my plan originally actually was to um, finish off, off my studies and, and then try and try to give tennis a crack. But um, what worked out that uh, um, dad's, dad's business actually needed needed a, a spot to fill, so I ended up working for him and, um, yes, yeah, somehow ended up uh, losing interest in tennis a little bit and mm-hmm. decided to, to give the footy a crack, so... Mm. And... Uh, Obviously, you joined uh, South Adelaide towards the latter part of 2013. So you've had sort of, I suppose, 18 solid months down there at Norlunga. How are you finding things? Yeah, good. I mean, when I first when I first went out there, I probably um, wasn't quite quite up to the level. I hadn't played in in about 10 years, I reckon. So it took me a while um, to to find my groove a bit, especially physically. Um, massive difference coming from covering. You know, a, a court running ten meters uh, in every direction to covering an oval. All of a sudden, you've got to run a hundred. You've got to jump. You've got to tackle. And um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, to Sharpie and, and the coaching staff at the time for, for giving me a run. I, I just needed a tall player in, in the reserves, I reckon. But that's all right. Um, and then yeah, slowly, slowly got into it. Felt myself. Uh, I was improving and yeah. feels like I'm a. I'm a I'm a decent, decent player in the in the team at the moment. So. Yeah. yeah, obviously in season 2014, you made continual improvements and regular fixture up there inside 50 for the Panthers. Um, is that where you sort of 
feel yourself developing as a key forward? Uh, yeah, I'm probably centre half forward and um, not maybe get thrown into the ruck a little bit as well. Uh, but yeah, look, I'm, I'm happy to happy to play wherever. Um, so yeah, lucky enough to to string almost a, a full season um, together last year was pretty lucky with, with injuries, and um, so the goal for this year, I suppose, is, is trying to trying to crack into into that league team that was that was pretty successful last year. Yeah, indeed, um, that'll certainly yeah be a good challenge for you because, it, as you say, it was so successful there. Um, have you set? Any little goals for 2015? Obviously, just to make that league debut would be a prime focus. I would have thought. Yeah, I mean that's that's the um, the ultimate goal, but uh, you, you set small ones, small ones to get to that point. So I'm just trying to get a little bit fitter, mm-hmm. a little bit stronger um, with, with every week. Uh, make better decisions, learn where to run a bit better. So yeah, it's all, a number of small things that'll that'll lead up to that, I suppose. Sure. And physically, I guess um, you're quite blessed to have a frame of 195 centimetres and up around the 95 kilos as well. So that gives you a lot of flexibility in the amount of positions you can play. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what happened, but we, we seem to be one of the only tall, tall Greek families out there. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I was... Lucky, I suppose, but it takes maybe a bit more, a bit more effort on the um, agility side and a, a bit more work, work on that side, which probably the, the tennis has helped um, compared to some of the other boys. But um, yes, yeah, still probably feeling though um, a, a little bit, a little bit uh, bullied around against some of some of the bigger ruckmen in the league. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, no, to try and try and use your advantage when the ball hits the deck, I suppose. And, um, yeah. Yeah, try and compete as much as you can when it's in the air. Sure. Tell us a little bit about your footy background. You touched on it earlier. Um, you played a bit at school, but how many years was it uh, that you didn't really even kick a footy? Um, because it would have been quite challenging to pick up the skills and the like, I would have thought, after so long out of the game. Yeah, um, like most kids, I suppose, I was playing a few sports when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Up, up through school, um, basketball, tennis, football... Um, and then I decided to, to to just stick to footy and tennis for for a couple of years, um, and then time came probably year six, year seven. So what was I there? Eleven, twelve ish, I reckon. Mm-hmm. Um, I decided to take tennis seriously. Mm-hmm. So I stopped playing for the school team, and then the year after, I think I played Sapsaza football but that was about uh, that was it that was the only thing I played so from about yeah 12 to 22 um yeah 10 years I didn't really pick, pick one up I, I, I might have had the odd, the odd kick around with, with a few mates but yeah nothing serious yeah so um hmm. so in saying that how difficult it been or has it been difficult to pick up the skills again um the skills I actually didn't find too hard to pick up. Uh, the physical side was was the biggest thing I reckon. Um, yeah. Reading the play and then just yeah, I suppose confidence comes comes with with both those things. So yeah, yeah just, just get, get it, getting used to the getting used to the aggression as well. I mean, other players I see just just jump into contest and um, and I'll kind of got a. Especially when I started, conv- convince myself to, to 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 jump in and put my head in first and, and get it. And but sometimes by the time you you work your brain around, the, the ball's already left. Yeah. So um, yeah, that, that was probably that's probably the biggest thing. Just that just that aggressive instinct, just getting used to getting used to the contact of the game. Yeah, for sure. Um, footy wise, did Tanasi um, play much of the great Australian game? Uh, probably just mucking around at school a little bit with um, with his friends, but yeah, he's ne- never never played for a team or anything. He's, he's more of a basketball fan, so okay. you know, mm-hmm. I mean, if he could if he could pick anything, it'd probably be basketball. But he happens to be a bit better at tennis, so yeah, okay. that's, that's all we're sticking with. So, given you, both of you guys, by the sounds of it, um, played a lot of different sports as children, what was usually the chosen chosen sport uh, in the backyard or? Um, on family holiday and the like. Uh, well, um, we whenever we used to play, play tennis against each other, it used to turn pretty aggressive. <laughs> so um, 
Dad quickly quickly put a stop to that. No, no playing each other unless it's in a, in a tournament with proper referees. So yeah, we usually just just get this shit around on the on the um, on the hoop outside, or, yeah. or, or maybe a bit of uh, FIFA inside, which also gets pretty heated. <laughs> so what used to unfold on the tennis court between the two of you? Uh, this is the line cause, I suppose, and then the, the, being, the, being the older brother, I used to know, used to know the right things to say to get him fired up and <laughs> get him off his game a little bit. So, uh, but yeah, you, you, you used to escalate and, and usually end in tears. <laughs> <laughs> it must be a nice feeling, though, to know that um, you've played a, a role in his success and where he's headed now. I mean, po- probably a little, little bit of a role. He, he, mm. he started... Um, this hitting hitting in the drinks breaks of uh, of my coaching lessons with his coach who's still with now, but um, yeah, a lot of credit I think has to, has to go to um, my old coach and his current coach Todd Langman has really driven driven the whole thing and convinced us you know the kid the kid had some talent and and uh, and to pursue it. So yeah, credit to him and, and also um, my old man as well has organised a lot of his hits and mm-hmm. all of his. Um, Travels and and every, everything like that. So um, between them, I'd, I'd probably probably give them give them a lot of credit. Yeah, and it doesn't. Um, I guess seeing his success, you'd be really happy for him. It doesn't make you regret your decision to head towards footy and not tennis. Nah, look, I mean, I was I was at a point where I probably wasn't good enough to um, you know re- really take it to the to the next level where where he is now. Sure. So. Um, to me myself, I just kind of thought, well, look, best best case scenario, if everything goes right, you know, I'm probably looking at two two hundred in the world realistically. Yeah. yeah. So, um, or, or already having a, having a, a, having studies to, to fall back on, I, I didn't really think it was it was it was worth pursuing. I wasn't enjoying it a whole lot either. So I wanted mm-hmm. to play something I could um I, I could play while while staying um in Adelaide for the mm-hmm. majority of the year. And and yeah, I mean, I'm 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 quite happy supporting him. I mean, yeah. there's no bitterness or, or, or chip on on my shoulder that that should have shouldn't have been me at all. So as long as as long as he um keeps his head in line, yeah, no, we won't have a problem there. Yeah, you just have to make sure he becomes the number one ticket holder for the South Adelaide Footy Club. Yeah, that's right. Well, he's actually got some links to um to Port Adelaide. That they've they've yes. been they've been pretty good in in helping him out. So um. Yeah, I mean, we we spent a week a week down there with with their with, with the team, and he was watching how how they recover and the professionalism mm-hmm. of the um of, of the of the AFL team in particular. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe there's still still room for for an FA and AFL team in there. So I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'm I'm convincing him. He's been out to a couple of games, so oh, good. been out to a few more next year. Uh, we certainly look forward to seeing his presence uh, at Norlunga, hopefully, but also uh, your continued improvement in the SNFL in season 2015. I certainly appreciate uh, your time uh, to spend with us today, Pan Kokonakis on SNFL Radio. Thanks for your time and wish you all the best in Melbourne for the rest of the week. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. Not a problem.